It's been over six months since I uploaded my trying Linux for a week video, and honestly, life hasn't been the same ever since. The video blew up way more than I expected, and my thoughts on Linux have changed a lot. At first, it was just a fun experiment. I wanted to try a new OS that might be better than Windows, but over time, I realized the situation was more serious. A lot of people weren't too happy with my choice of starting out with Arch Linux, and to be fair, I get it. It wasn't the best idea, but I was only motivated by the fanboys to try it out because of the hype. Among all the praise, there were also some genuinely amazing people who wanted to help newbies like me. A huge thank you to them. As I read through the comments, one thing became clear. I rushed into everything way too quickly, and for a while, I genuinely doubted if I'd stick with Linux at all. A lot of you pointed out that a week isn't nearly enough to truly understand Linux, and well, you were right. So, I decided to give it another shot with a different distro, one that turned out to be much better than I expected. Since then, I've been daily driving Linux. Quitting has never really been my thing, so I never actually walked away from it, but that doesn't mean it was easy. Arch Linux, in particular, gave me a rough time. I knew I needed something more reliable, a distro that wouldn't fight me every step of the way and would just let me get things done. And I knew exactly which one to try next, Linux Mint. Installing Linux this time was a completely different experience. I knew where I went wrong before, and your comments were a huge help. This time I was curious. I didn't want to rush things, so I took my time and handled everything one step at a time. After using the distro for a while, I was humbled. It was smooth, like really smooth. No annoying issues at all, at least for now. It was a completely different experience with my computer, one that I had never had before. My PC felt faster than ever, and I didn't even know it could perform this well. The interface was super welcoming. Everything felt easy and comfortable to use. Let's talk about all the stuff I did on my new distro, because trust me, I did a lot. Let's start with the customizations. While I was using Arch, customizing the UI was not very beginner friendly, although I did manage to get things done, but it might not be very easy for everyone. With Mint though, it was a whole different story. Most things were customizable right from the settings. I could tweak almost everything, even very small things like my cursor. The backgrounds on this thing are very impressive. I'm not a big fan of these, but there is a lot of good variety, unlike those on Windows, of course. There are three three themes on this thing, Mint L, X, and Y. Mint X is more like the traditional old school interface. I would have loved to use it, but it doesn't have dark mode and my eyes can't absorb all this bright light, so it's a no. Mint L seems to be trying to maintain a balance between the modern and the old theme, but it isn't really working, to be honest. Mint Y is what I finally settled with because it just works fine and I ran out of options. Next thing I realized was that I wasn't able to take screenshots. Turns out for some reason, Linux Mint doesn't let you take screenshots by default. Weird, right? After a quick search, I found CopyQ to be a popular choice for screenshots on Linux Mint. Setting it up was quite simple, and I even made a shortcut to open the clipboard, just like on Windows. Another very tough decision was choosing a browser. In my last video, many of you called out Brave as spyware and recommended Firefox. And, well, after using Firefox ever since, I kinda get it. Using Firefox was a very lovely experience for a browser. I really like browsing on it. But lately, seems like the tables have turned and Firefox has started to have privacy concerns. I'm still looking for a better and reliable option for my browser, so comment down what you use. The distro comes with a bunch of pre-installed software, and a lot of it is actually pretty cool and useful. You can tell they've put in some real effort to make the experience feel familiar, probably to convince people to switch. And not gonna lie, it's kinda working. The productivity apps, especially the office ones, are a great example of that. The free word alternative is surprisingly good. I honestly couldn't tell much of a difference while using it. It's like Word, but without the price tag. I'm not sure about all the finer details, but it does the job well. There's also a paint alternative, though it's not the nostalgic MS Paint we all remember. It's pretty simple and minimal, but if you just need a basic canvas to scribble on or throw some quick strokes, it gets the job done without any fuss. As for the PowerPoint alternative, I never really used Microsoft PowerPoint much, but for the sake of Linux, I tried everything. And I have to say, this free version seems solid. It's well built with plenty of useful features like customizable templates, transitions, and animations. While it might not have every single advanced feature from Microsoft, it covers all the essentials. Honestly, for most presentations, it is more than enough and works like a charm. Linux Mint also has a bunch of handy built-in tools. One such example is the Image Burner. On Windows, you'd usually need third-party software like Rufus for this, but Mint has it out of the box. Moving forward, the default image viewer, Pix, is super minimal, and that's its strength. It's lightning fast and has all the essential features, unlike good old Photos, which seems to need more RAM to load than Linux itself. 
For documents, Mint has a built-in document viewer. It's all right, but I personally prefer using Firefox for PDFs since it has extra features like highlighting and adding notes. I think Firefox might be one of the few browsers with those options, but I'm not entirely sure. The built-in video player named Celluloid is pretty good and basic. However, I still prefer VLC over anything else because it is undefeated. There's also a free TV app called Hypnotix with channels from all over the world. Sounds great, right? Except it rarely works. But if you're lucky enough to get it running, it's a pretty neat addition to have around. One tool I really liked was the Disk Analyzer. It shows a clear visual breakdown of your storage, making it easy to see what's taking up space. Whether it's big files, old downloads, or random clutter, it helps you find and clean things up quickly. Then there's the Task Manager. Easily the coolest build on this thing. The UI is pretty amazing. While playing around with the Task Manager, I noticed that I was running multiple apps and even recording my screen, yet my system was only using around 6 gigs of RAM. Compare that to my Windows setup, which takes up to 10 gigs just to boot. Crazy, right? There is even an on-screen keyboard on this thing. I wasn't sure why I'd need it, but considering the weird devices people run Linux on, it makes sense to have it around. And here's a fun twist from future me. Turns out that out of all the tools I've used, the on-screen keyboard has been the most useful. Frequently, when my system wakes from sleep, the keyboard straight up refuses to work. And my only way to get inside my PC is the weird on-screen keyboard. Unexpected, but life-saving. Another nice touch is the built-in password manager. There are no weird hidden vaults like on Windows. You know exactly where your passwords are stored and you can just copy and paste stuff around. Finally, the shortcuts are pretty similar to Windows, making the transition easy. If you're switching over, the learning curve is basically non-existent. Super convenient. Although using Linux was fun this time, I still spent most of my time fixing drivers, or at least trying to. One of the biggest issues I faced was once again with my GPU. It was a nice, cozy day, and I was playing around with my new distro when I noticed something odd. My computer felt very laggy and unusual. After banging my head around for a while, I realized Linux wasn't recognizing my GPU. The problem went away after a restart, but it didn't take long for it to come back, and it wasn't just a one-time thing. This happened pretty often, even when I was using Using Arch Linux. I had no clue what was causing it, so I tried every command I could find online, but it didn't help. I tried reinstalling the drivers, but that just made things even worse. Linux Mint does have a built-in UI for managing GPU drivers, which sounds helpful in theory, but practically it wasn't. After playing around with it, my distro completely stopped recognizing my GPU. Moral of the story? Don't copy random commands from Linux forums unless you know exactly what they do. Trust me, it's not worth the headache. The problem still exists today, and the only real solutions seems to be a clean reinstall, but I'm way too lazy for that. When I brought up this issue in my previous video, a lot of you said it might be a GPU problem rather than a Linux one. And honestly, after all the wasted efforts, that's probably the most logical explanation. Talking about content creation, Linux is still not very reliable for me. The lack of proper GPU optimization is one of the biggest reasons I can't fully switch to Linux. DaVinci Resolve, my primary video editing software, forget about it. It's practically unusable. After going through your comments, I've accepted that this might just be a me problem. I also tried some alternatives since a lot of you recommended ditching the proprietary software. But let's be real, most of them just aren't optimized enough for serious work. Cadenlive was the best alternative that I tried. It's surprisingly well optimized and pretty handy for basic tasks like trimming videos. But once I tried pushing it further, it quickly hit its limits. It's just not enough to get my actual work done. Another annoying issue was with my trackpad. Pinch to zoom was not working, which if you do photo or video editing, you know is kind of a big deal. I did find a zoom feature in the settings, but it wasn't what I expected. I'm still unable to get it working, so if you have any tips or know how to fix it, drop a comment. Using Linux for a longer period has really helped me understand my system better. I have a much clearer idea of how things work, and that understanding grows every time I use it. My system feels super fast and efficient, with minimal storage and memory usage. My SSDs are somehow performing better too, delivering almost their maximum read-write speeds. Even when I'm transferring files between SSDs, it's noticeably quicker than on Windows. Simple tasks like cutting and pasting files are also incredibly fast. If you're into multitasking, Linux Mint is a solid choice. The gestures and workspaces are seamless and easy to navigate. I've done my fair share of multitasking on Windows, but it's nothing like the smooth experience Mint offers. 
From my understanding, Linux Mint is an attempt to simplify the Linux experience, making it more approachable and user-friendly as a desktop operating system. Using Linux has been a journey worth cherishing. Over time, I've learned a lot about computers and had a far better experience with my system. Honestly, after all the Arch Linux trauma, I've started to genuinely enjoy Linux. That's not to say Arch Linux is bad, it's just not the best choice when you're starting out. You really need to understand the basics before taking on something more challenging. I've learned my lesson and will grow from my mistakes. Arch Linux might not suit me right now, but I'll definitely return to it when I'm ready. On the bright side, my primary tasks like programming have been a great experience. Everything runs smoothly, setting up tools is easy, and overall it's been super productive. Linux Mint was an enjoyable experience, and I'd highly recommend it if you're thinking of trying Linux. It's stable, easy to navigate, and user-friendly. Moving forward, I plan to try out other distros and continue evolving as a Linux user. Each one offers something unique, with its own strengths and weaknesses. Explore Exploring these differences is part of the fun. If you are planning to dive into Linux, start with something like Mint instead of hardcore distros like Arch. Trust me, learning the hard way isn't the best route. Also, a little life lesson from this journey. People online can have strong, often biased opinions. It's tough to find genuine advice most of the times. Don't get swayed by the so-called distro supremacists who endlessly praise their favorite system. Figure out what works for you and learn as you go. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.